Hey guys, it's me Sahar. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all of the books that I read in the month of March. I tried to film this video a couple days ago and I just hated the footage. I literally had the entire thing edited. I had it scheduled for upload and I rewatched it and said nope, I'm not posting this on the internet. I don't love it. So here we are again. So I'm really hoping that it only takes me two tries to film this, but yeah, I read a total of 11 books plus a DNF in the month of March, which I think is my best reading month so far this year. I'll put the number of pages I read up here because I don't remember off the top of my head, but I believe it was well over 5,000 pages. So I'm quite pleased with everything that I managed to complete last month, and let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So the first one that I want to talk about is The DNF because that is unfortunately Dark Dawn by Derry Kristoff. This is the third and final book in the Nevernight Chronicles and Nevernight is one of my favorite adult fantasy series at least until now because this one was quite a disappointment. We are following the story of Mia Corvera who has basically trained her entire life and is now off to an assassin school in order to avenge the death of her parents. She's trying to become a blade which is the most respected type of assassin in this world and she just wants to kill the people who executed her father and then also took her mother and brother to prison where they eventually died. Now the events of the first one were very very dramatic. This is a very grim dark story there are a lot of morally gray characters, which I love. I think Jay Kristoff does an amazing job at creating characters that do terrible things, make terrible decisions, and yet you're still rooting for them, which is why I love Mia Corvair. She is one of my favorite female characters in any book series that I've ever read because I just think she's so unique and strong, but also just a terrible person who is literally an assassin. Like, I am rooting for someone who murders other people. I don't know what that says about me, but I love her and I just love the school setting in the first one and the second book got five stars for me. I loved it so much. It left off on a cliffhanger and in this one, we pick up right where we left off, which made the first like 100, 150 pages of this very interesting. I was intrigued up until about the 100 page mark and then things just went downhill from there. Because in this one we're essentially following our main characters trying to get from point A to point B and the entire journey is just very repetitive, very boring and completely lost my interest. They're on the ship and they keep getting attacked and having to find another ship and then the exact same events are occurring over and over again. I think this happened about like three times at least from what I read and I was just over it and by the time that this book did start to get a little bit interesting is where I DNF'd it so I might go back and pick it up in the future. This may be like a soft DNF but I'm definitely not going to be rereading the two-thirds of this book that I managed to trudge through because it was just so so boring. So if I do pick this up in the future I will read just the last like 100-150 pages that I had left and see what I think from there but for now, this is unfortunately a DNF. So now let's talk about all the books that I actually managed to complete in their entirety. So the first one is The Dire King by William Ritter. This is the fourth and final book in the Jacoby series, which is about our main character, Jacoby, who is a detective, and we're following him through the perspective of his assistant, Abigail. And Jacoby is quite intriguing because he has this ability to kind of detect the supernatural, so it makes him both a good and a bad detective, but mostly people just think he's crazy, and we just follow their lives as they go around solving some cases. Now, the first three books I absolutely adored. I really, really enjoyed them, and the same can be said about this fourth and final book. I gave this four stars. I thought it was so entertaining. I thought it was a great wrap-up to the quartet. I loved all of the mythology elements that we got in this, along with the third book, because there are hints of, like, Greek mythology, which I absolutely loved, and definitely wasn't something that I was expecting. I also really enjoyed the politics and the history behind the Dire King and the whole council and everything to do with that in this book. However, I do wish this fourth one was a little bit longer just so it could give the plot a little bit more time to wrap up. I think it went by a little too quickly. However, I did like the conclusion and the ending to this book. Even though I kind of expected it, it was more of a satisfying guess that I made at what was going to happen in this series. So I'm still really happy with this conclusion and I'm glad I finally finished this series and also that I finished just a series in general. So 
props to me for that but yeah I gave this four stars. Next I read another four star book and that was Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. This is a reread for me and I really really enjoyed this. This is a YA fantasy that follows the story of this kind of island-esque realm where we have triplets and each one has a certain magical ability. So we have a poisonist, an elementalist, and a naturalist and they basically get separated at birth and trained in their respective magical abilities until come their 16th birthday where they basically have to plot against each other and the last triplet left alive is going to be the queen to this queendom. Now when I first read this I was very much into YA and I felt like this was a very very dark YA and while it definitely is for that genre I don't think that this is just objectively a dark book. I was expecting a lot more grittiness to this and a lot more cutthroatness to the sisters but really it just found them all to want to love each other and to be together and that just wasn't how I remembered my experience the first time around. However, I still really liked these sister dynamics. I think that they all had such unique personalities that I was easily able to distinguish who was who and I also really enjoyed learning about the magic in this because we have three different types of magical abilities. It was really cool diving into all of those and seeing how although they are separate they are somehow interconnected and the ending of this had me very intrigued and even though I remembered what the plot twist was from the first time around it was still a little bit shocking to me because I still didn't pick up like a lot of the clues or anything like that that led up to this plot twist so I still really really enjoyed this book if you're looking for a dark YA I would highly recommend this I don't know if I would recommend this to people who read typically adult fantasy I don't think you would enjoy it as much but if you read Young Adult, I think this is definitely one to pick up and I'm excited to continue on with the rest of this series. Next we have a very disappointing sequel and that is A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. This is the second book in the Shades of Magic series and unfortunately this one fell flat for me. I ended up rating it a 2.5 out of 5 stars I believe. So I didn't hate it but it definitely isn't one that I would recommend or a book that I was really satisfied by. So the first book, A Darker Shade of Magic, follows the story of our main character, Kel, who has the ability to kind of hop around between these four parallel Londons who each have a different relationship with magic. And we're also following a thief named Delilah Bard and their paths kind of intertwine. They're also trying to figure out the mystery surrounding this magical artifact and there's a lot more that goes on into the plot into and there's a lot more that goes on from there in the first one and then obviously the second one can't say anything about because it will spoil the events of the first one but we're mostly following just Lila and Kel in the first half of this book in their own separate journeys after the events of the first book and I just found that to be really boring especially considering how fast-paced and how plot driven the first book was this second one felt very character driven but I was also just not interested in learning about what the characters were doing. I wanted them to be together and I wanted them to be caught up in a lot of plot and scheme and just a lot of action and that's just not what I got from this. And when we finally got to the bulk of what this book is about which is essentially just about a magical competition, the competition lasted for about 75 pages and the fight scenes were really underwhelming and overall this book was just not what I was expecting. It really missed the mark for me. However, I did really enjoy the ending even though it got there in a different route than I would have liked or I expected it to. I still am intrigued by like the last 50 pages of this book and I am excited to pick up the third and final book. I mean I literally own it so I might as well read it and I'm I'm glad I was able to push through and I didn't have to DNF this one. But this book definitely dropped the Shades of Magic series in terms of my ranking for favorite series in my mind so that's unfortunate and yeah overall it's just 2.5 stars. Next I read Keeper of the Lost Cities Never Seen which is the fourth book in the Keeper of the Lost City series which is a middle grade fantasy about a young girl named Sophie Foster who finds out that she's an elf and gets taken away to learn all about the magical elf world in a school setting. Now this is probably my favorite middle grade series. I just love it so much. I love 
all of the characters. I think the character work in this is so, so phenomenal. I really feel like I'm rooting for all of them and I just hold them all so near and dear to my heart. And anytime something happens, I feel a tug on my heartstrings. So love the characters in this series. And this fourth one, we kind of go back into like a school setting and I loved that. I love the school setting elements in this series. So I was really happy to be back and I just really, really enjoyed this one. I will say the first first half was a little slow. I feel like there were a lot of different plots going on trying to get to the same ultimate goal and it felt almost disjointed or a little scatterbrained. However, it did eventually weave itself together and became a nice little continuation to the series. So I can see why all of these things were happening, but I wish that it had been more intertwined near the beginning because I was honestly just a little confused and not sure what the purpose for a lot of things happening in the first half was. So that's my only complaint and why I ended up rating this four stars, but still another outstanding continuation to this series and I cannot wait to pick up the fifth one. Next we had a book that I don't want to say I hated because I gave it two stars but I hated it. <laughs> and that was A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. Now I will say the only reason I did not give this a one star is because I liked that it had LGBTQ plus representation and I do want to give it some points for that. So aside from that, I hated every single element of this book. So if you aren't really looking for an LGBTQ plus fantasy, then definitely skip this one because it's just not something that I would recommend, especially if your taste align with mine. I do not think you'll like this, but this is a YA fantasy that follows four different characters who are basically all somehow connected in investigating a series of murders of the Ironborn happening in the city of Toronto. And Ironborn are half fae, half human. And the first thing I will say about this book is that the setting of Toronto I had such high hopes for because I grew up in Toronto and so I was really really excited to see my hometown captured in a story. I've never read a book set in Toronto and so this had me so hype and it just really really disappointed me. It felt like the author just kind of name dropped. I heard the CN Tower mentioned like four or five times in this book and it felt like that along with a couple other famous Toronto places were the only things that made it that city-like setting. Everything else did not give me any kind of Toronto vibes or anything that would tell us that we are in this urban city setting. So that was a major, major letdown. And the other thing that really fell flat for me was all of the characters. Now, with four characters, you're bound to have one or two POVs that you don't really like and then a couple that you do enjoy and you look forward to reading from. That was just not the case with this book. I hated every single perspective, especially Nausicaa, who is this fury that got banished for murdering a bunch of furies, and she kind of got cast away to Toronto, and she's supposed to be this really cool, really doesn't give a heck about anything type of character, and her only personality trait was her sarcastic and sassy comebacks to literally anything anyone said to her. And like, I get having a little sass. I get having some sarcasm in your vocabulary. Like a lot of how I talk is sarcastic and sassy and that's totally okay. I enjoy that kind of conversation between characters. But when that is the only thing that comes out of your mouth, when you cannot say a sentence just for what it is, I just can't do it. She got on my nerves and kind of going along with the only having one thing be part of your personality, that was basically all of the characters. We have a fey prince whose only personality trait is that he wants to figure out what's going on with the Ironborn and why people are killing them because he wants to like save his people. And while that's perfectly fine, you have to have more to your character than that. That can't be your only purpose in life. That can't be the only thing driving your conversations and driving your actions and thoughts and everything like that. And then we also have another character that I can't remember the name of. And she was, I think, my favorite out of the four. But again, she was just this chosen one who refused to accept the fact that she was a chosen one and that was her entire plot line and it just this book just didn't work for me i really did not like it i will definitely be unhauling it so if you want this book 
maybe I'll put it on Pango Books or something eventually. I am planning on doing an unhaul um, in the next like month or so. So maybe look out for this book if it intrigues you, but I, I, I don't recommend it. It was not good. <laughs> Then I listened to an audiobook, which was Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. This was another reread for me. I actually had quite a few rereads in the month of March, which is kind of good because I am trying to reread more, especially of books that I enjoy or books that I want to give a second chance to. And this definitely fell in the latter category. So when I initially read this, I think I gave it a three stars, which isn't bad. Like it's still like a, a decent book, but I didn't love it or anything. However, KJ Sutton announced that she was releasing a new like sci-fi romance story in August and that got me really really excited because the synopsis of that sounds very intriguing and it just made me remember that I wanted to like Fortuna Soren so bad and that I wanted to read the rest of the series. So I decided that I was just going to do it. I was just going to reread the first one and continue on with the audiobooks on the script because I have access to them, so why not? And I really ended up enjoying this one actually the second time around. I gave it four out of five stars. I thought it was fun. I thought it was entertaining. Is it the best piece of literature that I've ever read? No. Is it kind of just a ripoff of Akatar? Yeah. But did I have a good time? For sure. I, I just felt like the characters were just so fun to read. This definitely leans on the darker side, so if you're looking for a light, fluffy, fey romance, this is not the book for you. Major trigger warnings for a lot of things, so make sure to look at the content warnings for this book before picking it up. But I had a good time. This is definitely going to be a guilty pleasure series for me, I think, because I can just say a kind of objectively, which is still slightly subjective, that these are not like the best books written in this world, but I had a really, really fun time. I realized I should probably explain what this book is about. So this one we're following Fortuna Sworn, who is a nightmare, and she's the last nightmare to ever exist. And her brother Damon disappeared a while ago until a fey man shows up at her door and tells her that he knows where her brother is, but he's only going to tell her if she agrees to marry him. And then he whisks her way to the unseelie court and the plot just takes a whole other direction from there. So my main complaint with this book was that we don't see her relationship with her brother Damon beforehand, like before he disappears. And so you're never rooting for him. You're never really invested in this story of her trying to find her brother. However, even though that's the overarching plot of the story, there was a lot else that goes on. There's a lot of trials, a lot of competitions, and just everything in between of her trying to find Damon and then finding him. Everything that happens in between I found really, really entertaining, but that connection between her his disappearance and her trying to find him, I just didn't really feel anything for, and so that's why I knocked it off a star, but other than that, it was a good time, and I'm excited to continue on with the rest of the series. Then I read a book that I have a whole book review on, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, and that's The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This book I ended up giving it three out of five stars, which is definitely not what I expected. I had this in my five star predictions list, which I never made a video about, which I probably should. But yeah, this is definitely one that I thought I was going to absolutely adore, and that just wasn't the case. Now, I did really, really enjoy it. This one basically is a very character-driven story following two main POVs. So we have Iad, who has basically been sent to the queen in order to kind of protect her. And then we're also following Tanae, who has trained her entire life to become a dragon rider. And... Among the many things that disappointed me in this book was the lack of dragons. We don't really get much of Tanae's perspective, especially in the first half of this book, which is quite a lot of pages. We just don't get a lot of her, and so therefore we don't get a lot of dragons. Now, I did like that the ending had some more dragon action-packed scenes, um, especially because the kind of evil villain that they're all trying to keep asleep is the nameless one who is a dragon and so I really liked that element. However, a lot of this was just really slow. Um, the pacing was just kind of off for me and the ending wrapped up in like 10 pages. So imagine reading 800 pages for a 10 page conclusion. That's basically all I'm going to say about this book. It was a three stars. It was good. I, I found it entertaining. I don't know if this is one that I would push on people 
but if you have been hesitant to pick it up it is still a solid book like i still had a good time reading it it's just not a new favorite or anything Next was my third and final reread of the month of March, and that was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. I recently had the motivation to finish off this trilogy, and then I realized that I didn't remember anything from this first book, so I decided to give it a reread, and I listened to it via audio, and I loved this even more than the first time around. I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So The City of Brass follows the story of Inari who when she's practicing with magic accidentally summons a djinn and this djinn named Dara comes and takes her to the city of Devabad for protection. And we're also following the perspective of Prince Ali who is the prince in the city of Devabad and as expected, their paths kind of intertwine once Nari gets there. My only very, very tiny complaint, which is why I knocked off half the star, was that I didn't love Ali's perspective up until the point when Nari and him kind of meet up. And it just... It just felt a little slow and I was honestly just really really invested in Nari's POV and her journey getting to Devabad and so I was finding myself kind of trudging along his chapters to get to Nari's and get to the parts that I was finding more entertaining and more interesting and that was my only complaint but other than that this book is filled with action and betrayal and mythology and lore and there's just so many fantastic elements of this book. I think the plot was perfectly paced. I love the politics and all of the schemes and everything like that that went into this and I just cannot believe this was a debut novel. The writing was phenomenal and I just cannot wait to dive in to the second book which is on my April TBR so hopefully I will be getting to that very very soon. And then the last two books I read were two five star reads which I cannot remember the last time I had two five stars in the same month so we're gonna we're gonna go with my lower of the two five stars and then we'll get to my favorite book of the month and also maybe of the year I don't know but the not favorite but favorite was The Crimson Crown by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the fourth and final book in the Seven Realms series. The first one, The Demon King, follows the story of our main character Han and he is a street thief, peasant, and then we're also following Reza's perspective who is heir to the throne. Now there's a lot of magic, a lot of politics, and war that kind of goes on into the series and I don't want to say much else because I feel like any detail I give you will spoil stuff that I want you guys to experience yourselves, but if you like fantasy and war and lots of politics, like so much political intrigue, I think you will love this series. I have adored every single book that I've read, including this conclusion, which of course I gave five stars. I love this so much. I read this 600 page book in almost two days. Like it, it was ridiculous. I could not put it down. It was so fantastic. The politics in this fourth one I think was the most interesting and the most intricate and well thought out in the entire series and it was just such a strong conclusion. I think my main issue with YA fantasies is that they wrap up really nicely and really perfectly and everything just seems to be okay almost in that fairy tale happily ever after type of situation and this is just not that like yes we have a lot of the things that we want to happen happen and the things that we really do need wrapped up get wrapped up but at the end of this book we still have a war going on like there's still people's lives that they are living there's still a whole other journey that our characters have to go on that we don't really get to see which is both sad and also satisfying because it just makes it seem so much more realistic and I just found this book so compelling so gripping I just found myself getting caught up in all of the politics and especially because there is like a council and there's a lot of like votes on who's going to be in charge of the council and all of that going on in this book and I just found myself rooting for so many of the different characters for different places in the ranks of the royalty and all of that it was just so so much fun so I cannot recommend this series more. I love it so much. Again, if you like war and politics and fantasy, I think you should definitely give it a try. Even if you don't read YA, I have steered away from YA slowly and I still love this series. It is one of my favorites. So please go check it out if you haven't done so already. And like I said before, I gave this five out of five stars. So I know in my February wrap up, I talked about reading Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir and how that was going to be my favorite book of 2022. Nothing was going to top it. And then Andy Weir came and did it again because I read The Martian by him. And of course, 
five stars. If I could give it more than five stars, I would. I absolutely adored this book. I, first of all, cannot believe that it's a debut novel. This was so, so well done. I just absolutely love how Andy Ware can make a sci-fi not confusing because I am not a science person and this was so fascinating to read and I think the reason why I like this one just slightly more than Project Hail Mary is because of the character work. So this one follows the story of Mark who is an astronaut and he is essentially stranded in Mars after a mission kind of goes wrong and everyone back on Earth thinks that he's dead. So it's his journey of trying to communicate with them and tell them, hey, I'm obviously not dead. Please help me get off Mars. And I just found myself rooting for him. I just connected and related to his character so, so much. And not even in the sense of like, we have things in common. Like he's a botanist and a scientist. Like I have plants in my house and that's about it. So like, I, I don't really connect to his personality, but just, I was just rooting for him throughout the entirety of this book. This book made me cry and laugh and I think the format of this book is what really, really sold it for me because most of it is written in the form of video logs and so we're just hearing straight from Mark's perspective and he's such a funny character. Like he's just hilarious. He is making so many like lighthearted jokes about just being stuck on Mars and just seeing him try to keep hope through these diary entries and just everything like that. I, I just loved it so much. I honestly can't even put words together to express how much I adored this book. I mean, as soon as I finished it, literally an hour later I was watching the movie because I needed more of this story, I needed more of Mark, and I just, I fell in love with this book. I fell in love with the plot, the character, the setting, everything about this book was phenomenally done in my opinion, and I, I loved it. I loved it so much. Five stars, five glowing stars. Please, please read The Martian and literally anything by Andy Weir. Well, I've only read two books, but read Project Hail Mary as well. That was also five stars. I love that one too, but if I had to recommend one of the two that I've read, I would definitely pick The Martian. So there you go. Those are all of the books that are read in the month of March. Let me know down below if you've read any of these or what your favorite book of March was. I would love to know, but yeah, if you made it this far into the video, leave me a camera emoji because we had to refilm this on our camera. And so we are just going to commemorate that. So leave me a camera emoji down below if you want to say hello. But other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.